summer approaches, many folks spend more time outside running, but as those temperatures rise, it is so important that we adapt to that warmer weather. Dr. Jaime Aparicio, sports physical therapist at the Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, is back now. We've got seven tips to help you run in the heat safely. It's a coming, and that's one thing we have to remember is keep it safe. Yeah, as the heat approaches, our bodies aren't going to be very efficient. We, this, we're in this transition period now, like in the middle of these months, that we haven't had a lot of heat to train in. We've had a lot of cold weather, and we're about to get a lot of heat. So when we go out there, we're not going to be as efficient of a runner as we were in the winter. Yeah. Because our body's going to be using that blood to now cool our body instead of feed our muscles. So interesting. And does it really take a few weeks for our bodies to adapt to that heat? Yeah, it does. And so we go out into the heat, and as we go out into the heat and start running in the heat, our body starts getting more efficient at running in the heat. And it takes about, about 14 days to get that adaptation, and that's with consistent running in the heat. And again, you have to be safe. You want to make sure that you're not exposing yourself to too much heat too quickly, but yeah. little by little, you'll get more efficient at running in the heat. And you say, too, always run with a buddy. Always run it with a buddy. I think especially in the hot environments, it's not only for safety, but it gives you that motivation to keep on going. If you're running by yourself in the heat, it can get really taxing and kind of get demotivated. Um, so I think not only for safety, but also for that motivation. Factor. What about the distance and the time that we run? Because oftentimes on a beautiful spring day, you feel unstoppable. You're out there. But as it heats up... July and August. <laughs> yeah, should we be keeping these same goals, running the same distance we typically do in cooler weather? I would say initially no. So uh, since our body's going to be less efficient at running, I think you need to slow down the pace. If you try to run the same pace you're running in the winter, I think you're going to do yourself a disservice. You'll, you'll feel demotivated. You're not going to be able to perform as well. Also, the distances. You want to make sure you're running in a place that you're familiar with, has water stops, maybe shaded, so like Memorial Park or Herman Park, and know where the water stops are so that you can make sure that you're running in a safe distance before you get to the next hydration spot. Yeah. And you already talked about staying hydrated, but that's also, I mean, what do we do maybe the day before we're going to go on a run or even a long run? Is there an actual formula to figure out how much we should be drinking? Well, yeah, there is. You can find out your sweat loss formula and kind of see how much you're sweating, and that takes some calculations out that you can find online. But I think an initial, like, general rule of thumb is to make sure you're pre-hydrating, so hydrate the day before. A good way to find out if you're hydrated is by looking at your urine output. Is yep. your, what color is your urine? Is it clear? Is it yellow? Clear, is it right? really dark? The clearer it is, the more hydrated you are, the safer you will be once you get out there. So You brought along some gear to help us stay protected in the heat. Everything from shoes all the way up to sun protection. So let's start over here with these shoes. Yeah, so the shoes is just very simple, but they have to realize that these shoes, they have uh, different density foams, and those foams will wear out in the heat as you're running. So depending on the type of density it is and the material it's made out of, you want to replace these shoes, and a good running store will be able to fit you into the right shoes. They know exactly. We'll be able to look at how you're running and put you on a treadmill and kind of see exactly how you're running. And the clothing here, too, you're protected, obviously, from the sun, but you want clothes that are going to breathe. Correct, yeah. So instead of, like, a cotton T-shirt, it's just going to be soaked and kind of weigh you down as you sweat. These, these materials here are very, very light nature, but they also bring that moisture away into the surface to wick it away from your skin so you can kind of cool and evaporate uh, correctly. Let's quickly run through uh, these final few. This is actually a handheld water bottle. Yeah, a handheld water bottle has a place for your uh, ID card or your phone, but it's also important since these water stops aren't replacing electrolytes, it's, you may want to take an electrolyte drink in a handheld water bottle so you can replace the sodium that you're losing in the run. Uh, so that's very, very convenient. It's not that heavy and doesn't really affect your running form. Another pair, good pair of sunglasses. Uh, these are gooder glasses. They're kind of known in the running community as not only being inexpensive, but they don't bounce on your head, mm -hmm. so they're very comfortable, uh, protecting the eyes. This is a sun hat, so this hat has a uh, neck, protection. neck protection on the back, so not only protecting you from the sun, but it also has lots of ventilation, kind of help keep you cool. And doctor, you've got some sun protection for the arms there. You pull those right on. We're out of time, so we got to leave it there. But yeah. in the meantime, if you would like to connect with Dr. Aparicio, be sure to visit the Scene on Houston Life section of the website. Thank you again for stopping by. Thank you all for having me. I appreciate it. Great, Great information. To see you.